Hello, hello. Okay. Can they hear you? Can you hear me? Yes. Am I clear? Okay. All right, where was I? I was with the nuns, right? <laughs> and um, so the poor Claire's moved outside of Bordentown, and then a group uh, took the, uh, the old building, and they built another extension, and they made a, a, a place for um, senior citizens, uh, so it's, um, and they call it the Clare Estate in, 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 uh, in, number, in, in remembrance of the poor Clares who used to be there. And they say the poor Clares are still running around there at night, you know, so. <laughs> and sometimes I hear sound, strange sounds and I say, okay, sisters, it's okay. And uh, with that, so they're, um, and, uh, it, it, it's really, a, it, it's not a top-notch uh, retirement place for, and it's for men and women, but uh, 30, there, there's probably about 25 women and maybe five men. And, uh, and I take care of uh, bringing them communion and anointing them and things like that. And so I, that's my side job over there. Uh, no, the, no, the men, the men do the cooking. Yeah, yeah. Hi. So anyway, that's a little bit of where I live, and my office is down in the next little town of um, Roebling. Do you ever hear of Roebling? You know the people that built all the bridges uh, in New York City. That was the Roebling estate. Well, in the town of Roebling, that's where the the, uh, the mill was that built all those bridges. They're gone. And um, there's a parish in there, but it's connected with St. Mary's. It's called uh, the Assumption Church. And I have uh, a set of offices uh, there uh, that go back to the days when the um, Franciscans, uh, the, the um, Franciscans from um, Hungary came there to service the people in town because there were a lot of them were all Hungarians. They came there to work. So that's a lot of... Uh, ups and downs and uh, about things and I just got out of the hospital recently and I had a, a aortic valve replacement and it's a nice little silver thing the doctor showed it to me beforehand and that thing's going to outlive me it's going to be still pumping when I'm in the grave that's how good it is yeah, well, I'll be sitting there. You tell me when we're supposed to start. Five more minutes? Okay. This is free time. Um, and uh, so I have, uh, it was a marvelous operation. And how did it happen? One day I couldn't walk and I fell. And I thought it was my back because I have a bad back. And uh, I went to the hospital and the doctor said, oh no, your back's okay, but your heart's about ready to go. So that's how I ended up in the hospital on the uh, June 30th and had the operation on that. And so I'm doing okay with that. And I just have to have an operation on my hands. I have a carpal tunnel in the hands. And in the middle of the night, I'm heard screaming because the carpal tunnel is brutal. Don't ask me how I got it, but I've had it for two years. So I'm 91, and I'm going to be 92 in May. May 1st. My mother lived to 98, so I must have taken it after her, after that. And I'm still doing counseling in the little town that's just about 10 minutes from Bordentown. And um, it's, uh, so if you ever, uh, just go off. 1.30 and into the little town of uh, Roebling. 
and knock at the door and I'll have a session with you. <laughs> so I'm still doing counseling too. And uh, I, I, I just have to thank God that I'm still able to be all, of, uh, I had a class of 33 and most of them are dead and the ones that are still alive in our place outside of Chicago, they, they are just about making it which gives you this, uh, the realization if you can stay active, you'll stay alive. But once you stop, you never know what's gonna happen, right? The valves go off, hearts run into trouble, and so on and so forth. Any other questions? Oh, good. Remember those uh, times after mass at, e at either church? At, 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 I finally got all the people to get out and talk with one another, and some would talk with me. And the two in the parish, I, the two parishes I work in, they just buzz out all the way home. I says, "Hey, you guys got to get in better shape." <laughs> so I'm training them to get out after mass to talk to one another, and not necessarily myself. That was one of the things I always enjoyed on Sunday all the people out there talking to one another and making friends that what we celebrated here, we celebrated outside. That was the theory, right? So it was pretty good. So I got a lot, I learned a lot out here in 30 years. I couldn't believe I was here for 30 years. I spent most of my priesthood in this town. Would you believe that? And I want to tell you people, I, I, I pray for you every day. I've never, never forgotten. It was, it was really tough leaving and getting adjusted somewhere else. I really enjoyed my 30 years here. Why? Because of the people. Because what makes the church are the people and what made my wanting to come down here were the people. And I want to thank you for all your support over the years. You did a lot of good for me because I'm still alive at 91. Are we ready? We'll have, some, we'll have some more time afterwards for questions downstairs, but uh, we want Father to not give away all the good stuff for free. <laughs> all right, everyone. Please. All right. You look better now than 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> it must be that one glass of red wine I take with my dinner every night. <laughs> All right, so everyone, let's get started. Welcome to St. Margaret's Church, and welcome to everyone who's watching on live stream. Uh, let's start our evening with a prayer, which you'll find on the papers that were given out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I may always be holy. Amen. My name is Mary Rose Migliaza, and I'm a member of St. Catherine St. Margaret's Spirituality Committee. Our committee worked together to facilitate this, the sixth year of our pastoral talks. We begin with a bit of housekeeping. There are exits at the back of the church and one on this side. There are bathrooms in the basement. There is an elevator that stops the church and parking lot and basement levels. We'll be offering a question and answer period so we can continue to speak with Father after this talk. That'll be in the basement and we'll also have refreshments. On your way out, ushers will be at the back of the church accepting free will offerings to help us offset some of our expenses. And these talks are also available for viewing during the duration of Lent on our parish website. So if you've missed any of the talks in the preceding weeks or you just would like to see a talk again, please visit the parish website. So I am thrilled to introduce this evening's speaker, Father Martin Padovani. Father Padovani is a legend to those who have heard his beautiful and inspiring homilies and to countless others to whom he has provided counsel and ministry. This April 2nd, 
will mark the 63rd anniversary of Father's ordination. What a wonderful milestone. The year after his ordination, Father Padovani began in the vocational ministry, joining the Divine Word Missionary Bordentown community. He then obtained his master's degree in counseling, specializing in individual marriage and family therapy. In his work as a psychotherapist, Father Padovani has helped innumerable people with important personal issues such as anger, guilt, depression, self-condemnation, change, and so many other personal crises. Father Padovani is a noted author. He has written two highly acclaimed books, Healing Wounded Emotions and Healing Wounded Relationships, which have provided comfort and guidance to readers. He has helped many people lead happier and more productive lives with enhanced personal relationship with others and with God. I personally have purchased quite a number of copies of Healing Wounded Emotions to give out as gifts. And Father Padovani's insights, his sage words, truly are gifts to all those who hear him. Without further ado, let's welcome Father Padovani. Um, I, I can't open these. Once they fix my hands, I'll be able to open these again. Everything's fallen apart, but they can give you new parts, you know, and that's, that's one of the good things of today. Well, I, first of all, I want to thank you for having me. This is my first uh, official public speaking um, since uh, I had my operation on, in, um, in January. And uh, I just want to thank you for having me. And, uh, and I, I think it's, it's kind of providential that it should be here in Spring Lake where I spent 30 good years here. I can't believe that where the 30 years went. I, you know, I had, I can't tell you that hundreds upon hundreds of people I counseled down here, uh, the funerals I had, the weddings in which I learned an awful lot about, uh, you know, some of the preparation for, or for, for marriage and all of that. I may go into that uh, if we have the time, but I don't think we will. So t today uh, they wanted me to speak on the future church. And uh, do you people remember um, uh, William Bausch, Father William Bausch? How many? Yeah, he's a priest on our diocese. He's 94. He still is battling cancer, uh, but he he's not able to get out and speak uh, because uh, he's he has to stay away from people because he's he's very prone for infection. He's written 40 books, if you didn't know, and um, I've known him for years, and we've both been the same type. We've been very forward and progressive in all of our thinking over the years. And I ran through with him last week some of the ideas I was gonna share. And every one of these ideas, he agreed with me. And of course, I'm only gonna give you a few of these today. And uh, maybe the next time we get together, we can talk about some, some of the others. But he's, he's a wonderful man. And maybe sometime you can get a talk from him. You'd probably have to do it by, uh, uh, yeah, but if, if, uh, if you do, it would be worth it because he loves to talk and he's loaded with information. He's much more sophisticated than I am and uh, much more brilliant than I am because I got two books, he's got 40, so I can't catch up to him. <laughs> <He's> just, <laughs> and I don't think I've got the time to do that now. But uh, anyway, he, uh, I ran these uh, ideas past him. What I'm trying to do with the little presentation I'm gonna give you this evening is to try to open our minds to the possibility of what of the changes we need to have in the church. Not theological, not sacramental, but changes in terms of the operation of the church, how we interact, and so on and so forth. And I'd have to go along with uh, one of the cardinals uh, who last year said, the church 
is behind 200 years in the changes they should make. So we're really, in a lot of these, of how we operate and everything like this, we need, and a, an example of that is when I asked my superiors uh, back in 1965 to uh, study psychology, I knew at that time if I wanted to be a better priest and be more effective, I had to understand human people, the, the human person much better. And uh, my community, which is mainly a missionary group, they didn't want to bother with that. And uh, luckily I had a superior at that time. He said, well, you've pestered me enough, go ahead and get a degree. And I have to tell you, getting a degree in psychology and blending it with, uh, with Christ's teaching has meant so much because Jesus is, as you read the scriptures, he's the top psychologist too, besides the top theologian. And I have to hear this has been one of the great things that affected me in my priesthood my, and, and all my preaching and all my working with people and so on and so forth. So it was one of those things that I, I really believe that it's, it's been it, 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 this combining that uh, whole education in, psych in psychology with, with the Christian message has been really something that I've been able to really help with people. Because if you read the, if you read the Gospels, you can see that it's basically sound psychology. There's people that are way out in psychology, but a basic human psychology, Christ has it in the Gospels that he gives us. And um, this is one of the things that I had a fight to get into psychology. It shows you that the church was still being affected by Freud because Freud, uh, you know, in his teaching and different things on sexuality, he scared the church back at that time. And so the church was, had been always very reluctant to get into psychology, but psychology has moved way beyond Freud into the sound psychology that, we, that I see in the gospel. And so uh, blending that together has been one of the reasons I've been able to be successful with a lot of people. And I thank God for all that success because every day when I work with people, I'm always learning more about the human person. And I'm always learning more about how to work with, with people and their problems and issues. So I wanna, I thank God that in spite of the fact that I had a lot of resistance at that time in 1965, that eventually I did get into this field and it's helped me so much in working with people and making the gospels uh, so relevant uh, for, for people. I think the, the, the future changes uh, that will need to uh, be considered in the Catholic Church is that we need uh, uh, not talking here about the moral theological issues, but the pack of the organization of the church. Where can we make some changes in there that would be helpful? We have the the church at large, which is the priest, which is the bishop and priests and so on, and then the people. I think we need to blend this picture together a lot more. Uh, I think. I think what's happening now in the church is that we're, we're running low on priests. Uh, the sisterhood is practically gone. The lay brotherhood is gone. Uh, it, the Holy Spirit is really calling for a much active role of the people of God in the church today. Because in the next 10 to 20 years, can you imagine what the priesthood is gonna be like? It's gonna be very, very, if we're slim now, we're really gonna be extremely sin, slim in 10 to 20 years. But these are just things, and all that I talked to you about this evening, I'm not asking you to, to agree with me or not, I'm just throwing out ideas that I want you to consider, I want you to talk about. Because again, when we say you are the church, we have to put that into action. We have to get more of an active role of the laity, like the people who put this group together and, and working with these talks. And so that's one of the things that would be my, my great delight to see 
this combination. So the church right now is, you know, 200 years behind in a lot of things in this area. So we need an updating in a lot of the things that we do. So it is not a matter of how and when are we going to have a transformation. We're already in the transformation. And you can say it may have started with the uh, sexual abuse with the priest. I think it started a little before that. We're already in a transformation that's going on in the, in the church and in our world and in our country. But the church is going through a great transformation at this point. A lot of things are breaking down, and this is the way the Holy Spirit works, breaks down things, and on top of that, he builds a bigger and a better church. And you're part of that church, and I think you want to realize what, what's going on here this evening, this type of a meeting and getting people involved. This is what we, we want to do. It's, so we are already in the transformation that's going on, but it can be pretty painful to realize that we're running out of priests, that our sisterhood is gone. The same spiritual activity is going to continue, but it may not continue in the same form as before. And so when you hear the, the fact that we may have a married priesthood within the coming years, we probably will. The Pope last week mentioned, because of the condition of the priesthood in the world today, he mentioned that we're going to have to consider that. Now, no pope has ever said that before. And I think we have to realize we get stuck to, to a format that we're in that we feel that's going to go on. No, the, the definition of the church is the church is always in transformation. It's always changing. It's always growing. It's always moving on. It's not a static uh, entity. It's a live, living entity. You are the church. And this is what God wants you to be able, and some of these ideas I'm throwing out here, you may agree or disagree, it doesn't make any difference. But I think we have to get the laity from, from not being passive, but to take an active role in this church, which is your church. And the blending of the clergy with the people of God. And one of these things may be definitely coming because of the whole aspect of the uh, 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 of, of a married clergy. We also have to kind of realize what's taking place. And this may be a little bit harder to, to, uh, for us to imagine. And that's due to a lot of different things. Uh, uh, people, uh, you know, we come from a, a society that's very male. Uh, and it started off that way. And, uh, you know, so the females have had a secondary position, but they're pretty much on, a, on an even kale now. One of the criticisms is that some of the women have gone way too far off, off in, the, in the other direction. And how do we get a balance in that? We may be seeing priests, women priests someday. You may not like it, you may like it, I'm just throwing these things out. And I talked to Bill about this, and he says, these are things we have to consider. It's not Padavani that's speaking. This is the Holy Spirit that's working in our midst today and, and what's going on. And in the past year, we have to realize the drastic decline of people attending Mass just in the United States. 25% in each parish attends Mass, and that may get worse as time goes on, because when I look out on Sunday, I see a lot of gray hair and a lot of bald heads. <laughs> I don't see a lot of young people out there. That, again, has to change. In some way, we are not reaching the young people of our world today. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, we're not reaching them. I mean, what's reaching them is drugs and all the craziness that's going on. And what took place here in the, in the United States, these, um, uh, the, these spiritual renewals that have been taking place in different uh, colleges, that's the Holy Spirit at work. The Spirit is talking through these young people. 
and another one's going to start up. Uh, I think it's already started somewhere in in Kansas, if I'm not mistaken. But this is the Holy Spirit at work. We we don't always realize that. We resist it. We resist change. We're always comfortable in our own skin in this day. And the older you get, the less the less you want to see change, right? Let's admit it, folks. I'm older than most of you, and you like a nice little steady life. What has been a big help for me is always looking forward, always thinking new ideas, trying new things, thinking in that way. This is the way God has created us. He didn't make us static. So we have to see that our 25% are attending Mass on Sunday. That will probably drop even lower. Because when I look at you, and most of you are, are, are elderly like I am, in 10 to 20 years, we're going to be gone. We don't see the young people in church today, do we? So we're talking about we need change in the liturgy. We need to, uh, there, there are certain needs that, that, uh, that we're not meeting out there with the people. So we have to be critical of our situation today. Not all is bad, but not all is good. Progress in the church is we have to move on. The church is, as I said, the definition of the church today is the church is always in progress, is always in change. And when that cardinal said uh, last year, the church is 200 years behind in progress, you see where he's coming from? We are behind on a lot of things. Let me throw out one idea that I think is, why is it that in the Catholic Church today we don't have one of the biggest Christian Catholic television stations? There's none. Every diocese has their little, little TV station. A lot of them are second rate. And I'll go to a little lower. They're Mickey Mouse, some of them. They don't really do the job. We have some of the best Catholic colleges in the world. Do you know the information that these colleges carry in theology, in psychology, in scripture, which is exploding? Why is it that we don't have a television station that is national, that is getting out all of this wonderful teaching to all the people? That's a complete disaster that we haven't been able. There's a lot of reasons why. People don't like, you know, sometimes to share one another in different dioceses, right? Who's going to control this? Who's going to pay the money? So we get caught in human things. But the big TV station, Catholic nationwide, has never been, and it should be. That is. That, that is unbelievable, that the church with all our money, all our talent, all our wonderful colleges, that we're not getting that information out on a TV station that is nationwide. We have the money. We don't have the insight. We're still battling one another on things which we should realize that television should be one of the greatest sources of promoting Jesus Christ, not only in our country, but in our world. Does that make any sense to you? Yes. Now, this is a scandal that our bishops have not been able to develop a, a, a Catholic TV station. The Protestants have done much better but in, in that area. But we have the capacity, the talent, and the money to have one of the best Catholic television stations, not only in this country, in the world. We're not doing it. So this is where you people and myself, we have to see where can we promote these things. We need to be able to get this information out. Scripture alone and the advances we've made in Scripture today would blow your mind if you could get some of this information. It's in our colleges. None of us are in the college today getting these, uh, this kind of information. So this is what I think I want to get a, to get. 
we have to take some of our ideas and we have to see what we can do to move these things forward into a better area. The people from Europe, when they come, uh, and from Ireland, when they come to Mass on Sunday here in our country, they can't believe the amount of people that are attending Mass. And we know it's only 25% or less in a, given, in a given church. It shows you how bad off Europe is and Ireland and the things that have happened over there. The Catholic Church in those countries is practically non-existent. My community, which is a missionary community, and uh, uh, priests that we've ordained in all these different third world countries, they're going to Europe today to keep these churches open. That's maybe something you didn't realize. That's how bad it is in Europe today. And the fact that the, uh, uh, the, the people from the Middle East the, uh, uh, are moving into Europe, that's going to be a Muslim country the way it's going right now. And there's nothing being done over there in terms of trying to recre uh, reconvert and bring in these people. The youth are completely, totally distant from the Catholic Church. So it shows you where we have to realize we have to start thinking in a different way and a broader way and working together in these many aspects that can be so helpful in moving our, our, the message of Jesus Christ. We all have a responsibility to promote Christ. It's not just the job of priests and sisters and whoever, it's the job of, the, of, of you people who are the church always come back and realize your responsibility there. This whole idea that I'm talking about a television aspect, anything you can do in that way to spread this idea around, it's, it's an absolute scandal that we don't have one. And I don't know if you've ever watched some of the stations, uh, the Catholic stations in different dioceses, but they're really on the Mickey Mouse side and they should be doing a much bigger and better job of reaching the people with real theology, real scripture, real moral aspect. Wouldn't we have a tremendous effect on our country? Look at our country today. It's, it's, practically, it's, it's practically not Christian anymore the way it's going, right? And the problems we're gonna have in this country, we have to have a bigger effect. Another thing I think that's, that has struck me very strongly is that during COVID, did any of you people realize that there wasn't any bishop that spoke up about the turmoil that was going on? We talk about Biden being in the basement. The bishops were in the basement. And this is something that we have to kind of realize we can't allow. Usually the, the popes have always made uh, bishops out of uh, priests who were really running colleges or were um, in other types of work, but they didn't do pastoral work. So the majority of our bishops are not pastoral people. And that's one of the things that is stopping our parishes from being more advanced and more effective in reaching and teaching the message of Jesus Christ. So we have a lot of things that we have to deal with. This is why we're going through the situation we are now. This is not just something, I don't want you to think about the, uh, the, the breakdown in religion and things that are going on. I don't want you to think about it in a negative way. God is speaking to us. He's telling us to get off our feet and start really getting the message of Jesus Christ out there in some of the best and strongest ways we have. And one of them is a national, Catholic television station that we don't have it is really mind-boggling. And so the church is also, um, uh, is from a standpoint, from a, a making adjustments psychologically and mentally, and uh, uh, some, it, that sometimes it only takes uh, one generation to lose what we have. And we can see that 
in the present situation uh, that uh, because of the, the drop in um, our young people and young families uh, moving away from the church, we're gonna be in some, some, some real trouble. But always remember, never be, never be discouraged that the Holy Spirit isn't working. You see how these colleges, all of a sudden, they're there praising God. God's working in this broken country and, this, uh, and, the, and the, the power of evil that is so powerful in our country there. God is working through the Holy Spirit. A lot is going on, but God needs you. And I don't care if you want to say I'm too old. You're not too old. I'm 91, I figure maybe I get another year or two, who knows if that, if that mechanism keeps working. So, uh, and, and I, th that's the kind of spirit I want you to walk away with, that you have the power to bring Christ to the world, that you have the power to reach out, even with our young people. One of the things I, I, I preached on uh, uh, last month, I told the, the, um, the people, how many of you have families where the your kids aren't going to church anymore. They all put up their hands. That's how bad it is. And I told them, look, tell them how you feel. I'm disappointed. We brought you up Catholic. We put you through Catholic education. We gave you the sacraments. We are hurt. We are disappointed. We are angry that you don't practice anymore. And don't say anything more again. One of the things that parents do is as soon as the, their children come in, the door, did you go to Mass on Sunday? Stop it, you're turning them off. Give them a one good hard talk and don't go back and beat their, their, their ears anymore. That, that you, what you said to them, is gonna stay in their minds and their hearts. You will have effect, but if you wanna turn them off and make them even worse, keep on harping on the same thing. We're not gonna do it. It's bad psychology, it's bad religion. And I think a lot of parents are so, so disappointed, so worried about their children's salvation and their grandchildren. How many, how many of you uh, as, a, as a grandparents take your children to mass or do things for them even though your, 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 chil your, 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 your married children don't? I can't tell you the amount of grandparents that are doing this. I know a couple of grandparents that have even baptized their children, their grandchildren silently. I'm not too sure how that's gonna work out because they're not gonna get any education. But anyway, good luck to them. But, uh, but these are the kind of things that are scaring a lot of you as adults and grandparents today in this, in this particular area. Don't let go of your grandchildren. Say to, the, say to your uh, sons and daughters, do you mind if I take them to Mass? Uh, do you mind if I give them this book? Most of the times they'll say yes. Because I've, I've heard quite a number of, of, a, uh, of grandparents say, I'm surprised how my, uh, my, uh, my sons and daughters don't mind if I take them. To, they don't go to church but at least you can. The role of grandparents today in spreading our religion is extremely important, and it's extremely important that we, we realize that we need to do that, and that uh, I recommend it very highly for all of you here. So the other thing, too, I wanna get to is by opening all these kind of doors that I'm opening for you today, that I, that I want to kind of realize that the people of God or the church. And I, I want you to realize that you are the church. It's one of the things I used to say so many times on Sunday in my 30 years here. I don't know how much of, a, of an effect it had, but I want you, as long as you're alive, you've got the power to preach and to help with the, uh, with the breakdown of our uh, uh, Catholic faith, Christian faith today. You can still make a mark you can still do good. You can still help your family in many ways. And so the, the diversity and flexibility that we need to have in the church is that the church sometimes tends to get very rigid. And uh, 
one of the things is that we, we cannot be afraid in our church today to try new things, to do different things. And that's where a lot of the laity can sometimes come in and do a, a tremendous amount of good by bringing these things up to the pastor or the priest there because sometimes they, they will listen to you. We have had for too long a laity that is silent, afraid to speak up, a forgetful laity that, that they are the church, they have a right to speak, they have a right to challenge a church. I think the, the, the fact that um, so many things are going on with the drug area and what happened down at the border, I wanna bring to mind, I can't get over that our bishops have not stood up and said something. I have said this mass after mass on Sundays. I says, right to the bishops. This is absolutely deplorable. What is going on down there, and the only thing we have is Catholic Charities that is doing something. But the church at large should have had a voice. And sometimes our bishops are afraid to speak up because they're gonna lose their tax exemption. Lose the damn tax exemption, but speak up. I mean, that is an absolute disgrace that you're afraid of the tax exemption. We'll find a way, the Holy Spirit will help us, but speak up and challenge our leaders today. The, the, we have a right when it's a moral, when there's a political issue that is also a moral issue, we have a right and a responsibility to speak up. And we're not doing that. We're not doing it as a laity, and even as our church, we're not doing it. And so these are the things that I want to throw out to you that, uh, that I think are, that are so important uh, to, to realize you're not dead till you're in the grave. So try to do what you can in every which way. And try to, uh, when you can, to get some dialogue going with, with, the, with your children, finding out uh, what is it and why don't you go to mass anymore. And don't uh, approach them as a challenge or you're wrong or you're sinning, none of that. Just see if you can't get a dialogue with them to say, what is it that, that we're not doing in the church that you left it? What, what's happened? They will be very frank with you. Some of their aunts, some of their complaints are off the wall and they're not right, but a lot of their complaints are very valid. And I think anytime you can get a dialogue with, with your children on this in a, in a forceful way, let them get it out, let them get angry, let them say what they want. Psychologically, that's how people heal when you get out all the bad things that are inside and you can share it with one another. That's what counseling is all about. That's what, that's what uh, therapy is all about. How do we get these things out so that we can see them? When we take things out of that are buried inside of ourselves and we throw it out, we see everything much more clearly. And we also see some of our mistakes, but we also see some of the good things that would work and would be active and helpful in our society today. There's also the, um, I'm gonna get back to the, uh, this last page here that I have, is that um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only giving you about 10% of what I wrote up here, so. Uh, uh, the, 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 does anybody have any questions what I said so far? Yes? I think that um, in some ways we should go back to the old values, but I think um, if we had went by the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, honor your mother and father, uh, keep holy the Lord's day, <coughs> I think that's like a, a regular uh, regimen of what, what is good. Not only that, but you're saying children don't come to the church. Because on weekends, a lot of times, they have sports. They might go into baseball, they might go into soccer, and they might go into 
So anyway, that takes up the whole day. So, but it's, but uh, in one way, it's really the parents' responsibility to actually get the children to go to church. Yeah, but if the parents another. aren't going to church, yes, and that's, then then we have a problem they there, right? The, yeah. Yes, and when you said about um, the TV, uh, there isn't enough programs. I watch EWTN. That was uh, Mother Angelica. Yeah. She does the rosary. Well, she does yeah, and everything. she does. And, and uh, mm -hmm. then you have the Catholic Network. So when I listen to the eulogy, uh, um, the homily that a priest says, I like to compare what the priest has to say yeah. in the te on the television because sometimes you forget what yeah. the, the priest says. Yeah. The, now, Mother Angelica, you found very helpful, right? Yes, for me. What I'm talking about is this tele. When I talk to you about what a television, Catholic television station can do with all this massive theology and, and scripture, wouldn't that even do more? Yes, but yeah. I remember when they had Bishop Fulton Sheen. Yeah, she made, made, yeah, she made, a, she made an effect in this country. Follow. She did an effect in this country. Yes. But we have to go a lot further yes, than that. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And that's where oh, everyone has to come together. Yeah. Not only that, but the, the press, well, let me, sometimes the press is very negative. And that's maybe that's why Sometimes the don't want to they're speak always up. negative. <laughs> what? How do we come up with a plan? Open the door and see if we can figure out a way to get people more involved. We're involved. We're all involved. We've been involved. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Maybe the colleges would be for your, you know, the transparency of having them get into Catholic colleges for the virtual things and things that we yeah. want to do technology wise to tap into the resources that yeah. are available to the church that we can move forward. Yeah, but you see this TV. Uh, do you realize? Do, do you realize the good it would do? Oh, How many does, understand that television me. thing? It I, I, I wish I could get everybody's hands to realize we have got to get a huge Catholic television station. I mean, how do we reach? Do you may imagine the amount of people we would reach? I mean, it's unbelievable. And we're not even talking about Catholics. We're talking about all Christians. We're talking about heathens, everybody. This would be unbelievable to have something that powerful in our midst and we're not using it. That's why I get angry with the bishops in this country and our priests. We just aren't doing the job. And, and we have to, and, and, and they're not bad people, they're just not active. They don't see what the Holy Spirit wants. Do you think our Catholic colleges are doing a good job with that? What? The Catholic colleges, yeah, but see, they have their knowledge in the Catholic college. How do we get the knowledge out to people like you, you would be unbelievable. I know some people here that, that have been, gotten to scripture groups, they cannot believe what they heard and what helped them in all the scripture groups. The message, we cannot chain the message of Jesus Christ. And one of the things we're doing in so many ways, we're chaining it, we're covering it over. The television is probably one of God's gifts that could do wonders for us. If nothing else I say today to, to, to give the guys talking through his, through his head, at least remember the television. They, if we could get that going. And this, it's a lot of human error and a lack of human uh, spontaneity that we don't have that. And that, my friends, would really, really have such a power of conversion. You talk about the Holy Spirit working in every home through the television, right? I mean, it's unbelievable what would happen. Well, I think we're, I'm, I have my 40 minutes. I'm only allowed 40 minutes, so. so but I'm, I'm gonna be downstairs, and uh, I didn't even give you uh, uh, 30, 
uh, 30 minutes of what I have here. I have notes for, uh, that I've been working on for weeks. But I just want you to take what little bit I, my idea here today is not to give you all my information. It's to stimulate your spirit, your heart, your mind, and to get moving. It doesn't matter how old you are. You still are alive, you're still church, and you are a, come from a powerful church that we've had that is going under, but it's going under for good reasons because the Spirit's gonna build on this. Anything you can do in these areas in your last days of life, do it, and do it through prayer. You are not dead, you are alive in the Spirit, <laughs> and you can do a, a tremendous amount of good and don't be discouraged by your children because they've drifted away. Learn how to talk to them, say, I want to know, I'm not criticizing. If you don't go to church, you don't go to church. But could you give me a little bit more? We have really abandoned our young people. Remember all the programs that we used to have for young people in our schools, churches? None. I, the young people that are walking around, say 25, 30 years old, they want to get meet with, with another Catholic. We used to have groups all over the place. You have to go to Philadelphia to find one. Imagine, you gotta go to Philadelphia, and they only have one that I know of. I mean, hey guys, we got a lot to do, and I need your help, because I don't know when this thing's gonna stop in here, you know. And so anyway, I need your help your children need your help. I'm pleading with you as wonderful Christians and Catholics, do what you can. Take some of what I'm dropping out here with you today. You have your own ideas and things like that, and what you said about, a, see what that woman did? With, uh, with, and she had tons of money, and she, she made a real mark in the country, right? Yeah, and if she could do that, imagine what a national open wide television just on on scripture and religion everything else what's the program that everybody likes now it's on uh it, it's jesus what's chosen. the chosen do you realize the effect the chosen's having on our people imagine if we had a tv station with all this kind of you would be surprised what's out there in theology and scripture I mean, it, it'll, it'll blow your mind. What the scholars have done over the years, it's yours for the asking. Do I have your help? Yes. Okay, are you gonna do something? Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'll come back some other time for the rest of it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. You've given us so much to think about, and truly, we've been blessed to have you come and speak with us. So thank you so, so much. And we have for you some small tokens of our gratitude, and one of our attendees even baked some bread for you, especially for you, and a gift from the spirituality. Thank you. Yeah, so this is oh, this, this is oh, this is all for me. Yes. I'm going to share this with the the women that I live with. Um, uh, there was I found one the other that night. I was coming back. I was at dinner with somebody, and lo and behold, I find one of the women wandering over into the main street. You know, she was, you know, she she's uh, mentally she's lost everything. And I grabbed her and she could recognize me and I brought her back in. They're sweet little things. I said, how did I ever end up, if it was a mistake that I ended up there because if somebody told me I was gonna be in that place, I would have never gone. Because <laughs> it's, it's second rate and the food is lousy. <laughs> and last year I had a fight with them about all the mice in my room, so. Uh, <laughs> so, I let, so I, you know, but you know what? God put me there for a purpose, like he put me here for 30 years, and God bless you, and I'll see you downstairs. Yes. So
Everyone, you can now head downstairs for a continued question and answer and refreshments. And thank you. Have everyone have a wonderful evening and if folks on the live stream as well. Good night. Well, I hope I gave them what you wanted, I'm, yes. and I didn't even get it all. I wasn't. I wasn't uh, planning to get all. I just wanted to get enough. Uh, there are refreshments downstairs, and also Father will be available for more Q&A downstairs afterwards.